So Cabala. Could I call her Cabala? You can call her Cabala. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus H. <laughs> Let's put more poor people in prison. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, All right. So Kamala Harris went on 60 Minutes, and it was a gas. Uh, she laughed at nothing. She ran away from real issues, and she gaslighted. So let's watch. You're very different in the policies that you've anything. supported in the past. You're considered the most liberal United States senator. Uh, and what does that tell you? Uh, what does that tell you? She's the most liberal United States senator? A tool of Wall Street and a cop who had to be sued to let people out of prison. I, I somebody said that, and it actually was Mike Pence on the debate stage. But <laughs> yeah, well, actually, the nonpartisan. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's just la again. She just cackles for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And and GovTrack has rated you as the most liberal senator. You supported the Green New Deal. You supported Medicare for All. You've supported legalizing marijuana. Joe Biden doesn't support those things. So are you going to bring the policies, those progressive policies that you supported as senator, into a Biden administration? Oh, yeah. so what this news person is saying is you and Joe Biden are really different. I mean, he wrote the crime bill. You implemented it. <laughs> See how different you guys are? <laughs> I thought the this is fake controversy. Yes. And I also thought the reason why she had to tell Kamala all the things that she was progressive on. Otherwise, Kamala couldn't come up with a list anyways. Right. You're right. You're right. You're the most progressive in it. Unbelievable. You're considered the most liberal United States senator. They didn't include low level drug offenders in that assessment. I bet. <laughs> uh I'll be honest, when she... Okay, well, let's go. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. What I will do, and I promise you this, mm -hmm. and this is what Joe wants me to do. Oh, yeah. This was part of our deal. I will always share with him my, my lived experience my lived as it experience. relates to any issue that we confront. I will, I will relate my lived experience. That's the, that's the new buzzword. My lived experience. That's the new buzzword or term. You know, you know who else have a, has a lived experience, Kamala? I know a guy who has a lived experience of being having Steve Mnuchin steal his house from him illegally and then you not prosecuting him because you're a tool of Wall Street. What about that lived experience? Is that the lived experience you're going to tell Joe about, how to screw over fucking homeowners and old people in favor of the banks? Is that your lived... Because that's your real lived experience. Your lived experience of growing up privileged... And I promised Joe that I will give him that perspective and always be honest with him. And is that a socialist or progressive perspective? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it is the perspective of, of a woman who grew up a, a, a black child in America who was all... I'll be honest, when she compared her to a socialist, I, I laughed pretty hard, too. That's pretty she, So that's a, that's a solid laugh. So a <laughs> prosecutor who also has a mother who arrived here at the age of 19 from India, who also, you know, likes hip hop. <laughs> like, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, I want to give you I want to give you the opportunity. I don't know what she's laughing about, but. Uh, she likes hip hop so much she can travel in the future to hear stuff that hasn't been released yet. Did you know that? <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> Maybe to address this. Okay, ready? Uh, here's what uh, Aisha says. She says, I can't get over the fact that when asked whether she'd push Biden to adopt Medicare for all or a Green New Deal, Kamala Harris laughed hysterically and said no. She would be bringing her lived experience as a black woman who likes hip hop. What an exchange to define the times. I'm surprised she didn't show us her cool shoes. I'm co-sponsoring Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill because health care is a right. Add your name if you agree. Remember when she did that? Mm -hmm. 
not doing that. But here she is trying to win an Emmy. Watch this. Oh, believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. Mm. So I will tell you that on this subject, it can... There we go. Do you agree today, do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America? Then, no, do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I opposed. Well, I there did was not a oppose. failure of... of so that's her, that's her trying to get an Emmy. And then she goes here and says... Because in those debates, you landed haymakers on Joe Biden. I mean, they were, his teeth were like chiclets all over the stage. And now I believe you that you're fully supportive of him. How does that transition happen? How do you go from being such a passionate opponent on such bedrock principles for you? And, and now you guys seem to be pals. It was a debate. <laughs> Not everybody landed punches like you did, though. It I mean, was a debate. <laughs> so you it was a debate. Come on. I don't actually care about that stuff. That's just shit I was saying. To try to score points in a debate. That's what she's saying. Come on. I don't care about that shit. That busing shit. I mean it. It was a debate that the whole reason, literally, it was a debate. It was called a debate. I Everyone understand. Travel to the debate. There were journalists there covering the debate. You know, at debates, everybody just lies and stuff and doesn't say things they mean, you know, whatever. They just throw a lot of shit on the wall and sees what sticks and that that stuck. It's like she's a psychopath almost. It's a debate. Debate. You're a journalist. It was a debate. It was called a debate. Debate. Oh, I got she found a way to get out of that question. That's what she thinks. She's just gonna that's what they do. She just keeps laughing well, and laughing. Jimmy, she's right. It was literally a <laughs> debate. <laughs> literally, literally. Just literally a debate. <laughs> Where there would be a debate. Jesus. <laughs> I should have been an actress. <laughs> Here, here's some more. I would not be standing here were it not for the education I received. And I know many of, many of us will say the same thing. And I believe a child going without an education is tantamount to a crime. So I decided I was going to start prosecuting parents for truancy. Well, this was a little controversial in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the poorest people in jail for truancy. Isn't that funny? Ha <laughs> ha! I'm not gonna help people. And frankly, my staff went bananas. They were very concerned because we didn't know at the time whether I was gonna have an opponent in my reelection race. But I said, "Look, I'm done." I mean, God, I'm doing some horribly draconian shit to the poorest, most vulnerable people in society, and I'm fucking bringing down the hammer of the government on them as hard as possible. And I don't give a fuck. And my staff was like, "Hey, I'm like, ah, I don't care. I'm a, I'm a fucking dead inside." This is a serious issue, and I've got a little political capital. And hey, education's important. Here's a, here's an even more horrible idea, though. I'm going to spend some of it. And this is what we did. We recognized that in that initiative, as a prosecutor in law enforcement, I have a huge stick. The school district has got a carrot. Let's work in tandem 
around our collective objective and goal, which is to get those kids in school. So to that end, on my letterhead, now let me tell you something about my letterhead. When you're the DA of a major city in this country, usually the job comes with a badge. And there is often an artistic rendering of said badge on your stationery. So I sent a letter out on my letterhead to every parent in the school district, outlining the connection that was statistically proven between elementary school truancy, high school dropouts, who will become a victim of crime, and who will become a perpetrator of crime. We sent it out to everyone. A friend of mine actually called me and he said, Kamala, my wife got the letter. She freaked out. She brought all the kids into the living room, held up the letter, said, if you don't go to school, Kamala's going to put you and me in jail. Isn't that funny? Yes, we achieved intended effect. Isn't that funny? Poor people aren't scared to death enough. Poor minority people aren't scared enough. We got to scare you another. There's another way we're going to put you in jail, get you in the system. Uh, prison stocks went up right after Kamala Harris was confirmed as vice president. That's who Kamala Harris is actually going to do socialism for. The for-profit prison industry, like she always has. That's why she's giggling about locking people up. That's why she had to be sued by the federal government to ha- have her release prisons, prisoners in California that she would not release. Hey, Kamala Harris has to answer for not prosecuting Steve Mnuchin. She likes prosecuting truants, but she won't prosecute Wall Street criminals. Isn't that interesting? She goes, well, I didn't prosecute him because his kids weren't late for school. <laughs> his kids went to school, so what do you, what, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do with that. How Kamala Harris fought to keep nonviolent prisoners locked up. As California Attorney General, she spent years subverting the 2011 Supreme Court ruling requiring the state to reduce its prison population. The overseeing judicial panel nearly found the state in contempt of court. One wrote the crime bill, the other enforced it. Authoritarian establishment ticket all the way. Nothing will fundamentally change. Build more schools, not jails. Just joking. Build more jails is what Kamala Harris says. She's just joking. So there she was on 60 Minutes. That's who she is. That's what you're getting. You're getting two unbelievable right-wing authoritarians uh, in lefty clothing. They're not. They're unbelievable right-wing. Things are going to get way worse when Joe Biden is president. So I know all the blue check assholes are going to go back to sleep. Andy Richter will be happy. As as city he lives in turns into fucking Brazil. He'll be happy, though, because Trump won't be on TV. And then he can go to parties and act like a good person. Even though those people will never use their platforms to to lampoon the cause of Donald Trump. They'll only lampoon Donald Trump. And that's why most comedy, most comedy sucks right now. Those late night shows are fucking garbage. Garbage. Stephen Colbert did one of probably maybe the best comedy show in the history of political comedy. The Colbert Report. The show he's doing on CBS is the exact. He, he turned into the character he was making fun of. That's how bad it is. His show. His show is horrible. I, you see a lot of people's shows go horrible under Donald Trump. Wasn't that amazing? A lot new shows. A lot of, lot of lefty new shows. Go, turn into garbage because of Donald Trump. They turn into conspiracy theorists. They turn into people who repeat CIA talking points uncritically. They turn into people who shame journalists who get it right. Because of Donald Trump, that happened. That happened to YouTube lefties. That didn't happen to just fucking assholes at CNN. And to this day, those people still do it. And now you wonder why everybody's being censored under the idea that it's Russia. Because the left is, is pushing Russia gate. The left is propping up the intelligence community. The, pro, the left props up the surveillance state. 
And if you think when you vote for Ilhan Omar or fucking AOC that they're against a surveillance state, you're wrong. They all voted for it. They all voted for it. None of them voted against it. As Norman Solomon pointed out last October, what's the point of voting for progressives if they're just going to vote in favor of the surveillance state anyway? There is no point. Hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you we join our premium program, get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video. <laughs> 